Hey guys, it's Elena. Today I'm really excited to introduce you to my brand new greenery brushes for Procreate. These brushes are super unique because they're made from real pressed plants. I have personally collected these plants from across England and Wales over the past several years. I've pressed them, I've scanned them, and cleaned them up digitally in order to make these brushes for you. And the brushes are actually not stamps, they are dynamic brushes, with the exception of a couple of tree stamps. But most of them are brushes that you can bend to your will. You can create ferns, palms, um, leaves, leafy branches. You can do all of this dynamically by drawing with these brushes. So I'm really excited to show this to you. Let's go ahead and get into it. So when you first download the brushes on your iPad, they will go into your downloads folder. So let's go ahead and navigate to that in the files app. So I'm just pulling down on my screen and typing in files. So there we have the files app. I'm going to open that and where you can find your downloads folder is under iCloud Drive downloads. And the greenery brushes will be in a zip file in here. You might have a lot of stuff in your downloads folder. I try to keep mine clean because I don't want you guys to see the big mess. So you might have a lot of stuff. You might have to just kind of scroll around, but they should be in your downloads folder as a zip file. Don't use the search function because for some reason it doesn't work to, uh, to open a zip file from there. So just kind of scroll until you find the greenery brushes and then tap on that zip file and then it will create this new blue folder right here then once that is created tap into that and then you will see that um, there is a swatches file and then there is also a dot brush set file where all of the brushes are located and so in order to load these and procreate um, you just tap each one and they should open up the procreate app so let's do it with the brushes first. I'm just tapping that. You should see this little importing symbol. And then when that is done and it opens up in Procreate, you won't see anything there because the brushes will have gone into your brushes folder. So when you open up a document, tap on your brush icon and then scroll to the top and you should see the brushes there. And I have it twice because I already have it loaded. So I'm just going to delete one of those, but it should go to the top of your list. And then let's go back to the files app and load the swatches. And the same thing, we just tap that. And instead of going into your brush folder, it will go into your swatches file. So just tap on your color over here and then scroll down. And the swatches will be at the end of your swatch list. So brushes go to the top, swatches go to the bottom for some reason. So once you have all of that loaded, and then you are ready to start experimenting with your brushes. So let's go ahead and have a little overview of what is included. I have included some little folder headers just to explain the different sections because there are 135 brushes in this folder. So I didn't want it to be overwhelming and I've actually gotten rid of quite a lot. So those are the 135 best ones, but um, I wanted to make sure it was very clear what each brush set, uh, what each brush can do. So I've included these little headers. So we'll just go ahead and start looking at the first section here, continuous leaves. And I've written growing in the direction of the stroke, growing in quotation marks. So you can use these brushes to create branches and leaves. So I will just go ahead and demonstrate. I'm selecting leaves number one and just one of my green colors. And so these brushes will come out as a continuous line of leaves. You can make branches with this. Some of them are, um, they have a little bit of pressure sensitivity in them. Like this is a not, not very much pressure. This is more pressure. So there is some pressure sensitivity. Most of them, it's not a whole lot. It's just enough to have it look a little more dynamic so that you can create branches. And all of the continuous, all of the brushes marked continuous are really good for, for wreaths as well as branches. So in order to create a wreath, um, you would just make a circle and connect it and then hold it if you want it to be a perfect circle. So if you hold it, 
then you get this um, this quick shape created in Procreate. You can make it bigger or smaller. And if you touch the screen with your finger, then you'll get a perfect circle. And this is all without letting the pen up. So you would let the pen up when you're happy with that shape. And you can do that with any of these brushes. So I'm just gonna demo a few of the brushes here. We've got a lot of different kinds of leaves. And these are all made from real plants. And some of these are more pressure sensitive than others. I've just tried to make it work with the individual brush images. So some of them work better um, with a lot of pressure sensitivity. Some of them look better as a sort of a static size. So we have quite a lot of leaves here. We've also got some ivy. There's a lot of ivy in England. If you're familiar with, with, um, with England at all, you'll know that it just grows everywhere here. So I have made several brushes out of ivy and it's all got its original texture, beautiful texture to it. Um, I really like this one as well. We've got a lot of ferns as well. So we're still on the continuous brushes. You can still make reeds out of all of these. I'm just demoing some of my favorite ones. We've also got some down here, some I've called field grass. And these are basically weeds um, and, you know, just kind of like these these grasses that you'll that you'll see out in the fields. And they're really good for reeds as well. Some of them are, you'll see more brushes in this style down below with the palms and the ferns, um, but these can make stalks as well. So the ones that I've labeled um, field grass, these ones work really well, kind of like, like this as well. But you can also do, you can, really any of these any of these brushes marked continuous you can do as like individual branches or stalks of plants or as wreaths so oops so you could do you could do either one and mainly the thing that the common thread through the continuous brushes is that you keep drawing and they keep on coming out of the brush and down here at the bottom of the continuous brushes, we have a couple extra ones. I didn't think that they merited their own section, um, but the ones that I've named wreath are especially curvy. So they, this one, for instance, wreath number one, doesn't really look good as a, just as a line, but it does look great as a wreath because it's curvy. And that's the same with the others that I've named wreath. So that's kind of the only exception in the continuous leaves brushes. Um, these ones, these wreath ones are, are not like a continuous line, but the rest of them are. So moving on, we have continuous herbs and these are all very similar as well, but I thought that they kind of got their own section because there were quite a few that were herbs because um, I, I ordered, <laughs> I, I found a company with edible, um, flowers and plants. And I ordered um, a lot of bulk orders from them and I pressed them all. And there were quite a lot of beautiful herbs in there. So I've made brushes out of these as well. And they're very similar to the continuous brushes that I've already showed above. So moving on from that, um, it becomes a little bit different. We have our build a palm brushes. And these are brushes that where you can you can make like palm leaves in different kinds. I've got some different formulations. Generally, I'm imagining using these in 
sort of this configuration where you're creating these, you know, these, these single branches out of them. Um, you probably could do, here, you probably could do a wreath out of these as well, but they're not really meant for that because they don't really look right as a wreath. They're more like building your own little jungle. That's what these are for. I had a lot of fun making these. It makes me think of, there's this book um, called Finn Family Moomin Troll. I don't know if anybody's heard of it, but there's this, this scene in the book where the main character wakes up and his house has turned into a jungle. And that's kind of what I was thinking of as I was making these brushes. So maybe I'll have to try to recreate that, that drawing with these brushes at one point. But these are the palms and that at the bottom of the build a palm section, we've got some that I've called tropical curvy. I don't know what to call them. I'm not super good at naming brushes to be honest, but basically it looked tropical to me and looks really good curved. Kind of makes me think of bird of paradise, but it doesn't really look anything like a bird of paradise. So these are also really fun for building your jungle. Moving on from the tropical brushes, we've got our build of fern brushes. And these are very similar to the palms. And you can create dynamically your own ferns. So you can make your little woodland out of these. And I was really, really excited when I figured out how to make this, these little ferns because I just, I just love them. They grow everywhere here in England. And it's really nice that you can just make your own out of these instead of using stamps. So I've got a lot of these. You can make them. If you go, if you go kind of, kind of fast with the palm, uh, the ferns, and also with the palms, um, you'll get this really long taper at the end. And you can have like very long leaves like this or you can make them fat with more pressure and going slower. So that is completely up to you. That's why I've made these dynamic because I want you to be able to create however you want your leaves to look. I want you to have that freedom. So we have a couple of different styles of ferns here. All of them, oops. All of them dynamic, all of them kind of following this principle of you can go fast to get a nice long one, you can go slow and deliberately. And this ending where you've got this nice tip, I'm kind of doing like a flick with the pencil to create that taper. So this is with the same with the palms and with the with the ferns. In order to get this lovely taper, you've got to do a little flick. And those are the ferns. Very, very happy with those. So moving on from those, we have a similar concept with evergreens. So it's kind of a pattern. Um, all my favorite kind of plants, basically palms, ferns, evergreens. Um, so we've got our pine needles. Of course, it's a little bit early in the year for these, but they'll come in handy in about six months if you like making Christmas designs. So we've got just some different styles of evergreen that you can use to kind of build your Christmas trees. Moving on from those, we have some brushes that I have called ground cover. And the reason I've called them ground cover is that so with the continuous brushes, they are growing right out of your stroke. Like your stroke goes in the direction that the brush is growing. Whereas with the ground cover brushes, the, the, it's the opposite, it's perpendicular. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's say that we're making a hillside with, with some plants on it. And that's what the ground cover is for. So they're coming out perpendicular to the brush and they do have kind of a, a streamline in them in that they, they will um, kind of mold themselves to your stroke. And the reason for this is because I don't want them going all haywire while you're trying to make your stroke, while, while they're trying to figure out which direction you're going in. So it's, it's a bit more cohesive, a bit more streamlined um, 
because of that. So they should be, they should just be following your stroke. So we've got a lot of different grasses. Um, these are made from real grass. I did actually press blades of grass in order to make this and scan them. So I'm very, very excited about these brushes. I really love them. So we've got a lot of different varieties. This is if you're, if you're making kind of a, a big scene, um, an outdoor scene, a, a landscape of some kind, then these would come in really handy. And these brushes are not like painting brushes because you know, they are made from actual realistic plants. Um, and I'll get more into that in a few minutes here. But like if, if you're making like a, an oil painting, these probably won't go very well with that. It's more like if you want to have realistic looking plants um, or just to make kind of like, um, what is the word? There's a Japanese art of, of making, uh, making artwork with pressed flowers and pressed plants. And so that, that is what I had in mind when I made these. So continuing, I'm just demoing some of the ground cover. You know, you can, you can do like a hillside, you can do across the bottom. If you're making a, you know, background for something, we've got quite a lot of ferns. Some of them, not all of them, but just a few of the ground cover have a, our variable color. I've written variable color on it. And this is because um, not all of them really lend themselves to this, but some of them do. So I'll just show you what, what I mean with fern number one variable color. You just get some different colors in here. And this is based on the color that you've chosen. Most of the brushes will have a very slight variation in color, but not a lot, um, because I want you to be able to have control over that and you know add in your own colors. But there were just a few of these that I just really liked how they looked with the variation already there. And of course you have, you have a version that doesn't have the variation as well. So moving on from the ground cover, there's a few more I haven't shown. There's, there's just quite a lot of these and really good for building up a scene. So moving on from the ground cover brushes, we have build a tree. So I, as I said in the beginning, this is kind of the one exception to the pressed flowers um, concept because obviously I can't press a tree. But um, I wanted to have some trees in here anyway, because I do have a lot of great pressed leaves um, in this collection. So I wanted you to be able to create some fun, whimsical trees out of this. So we have a couple of ways of doing this. We have tree stamps. There are four stamps um, and they are not leafy trees. They are just sort of tree skeletons. And then from each of these, we also have a tree cover brush. So for instance, the stamp, let me just grab a brown color. The stamp is just like, boom, there's the tree. Whereas the tree cover is like, if you want multiple trees um, in your scene, then it's just going to kind of randomly add them in. And the idea with these trees is that you will then add leaves to them. And we also have actually a tree trunk or branch um, dynamic brush, which you can use similar to these tree skeletons if you want to just completely from scratch make your tree skeleton. So we have, we have these here. I'm just going to keep them because I'll show you how to use those in a moment. But I'm going to draw a little tree with this trunk brush as well. So it kind of has this flick um, taper as well, like a lot of the other plants. So let's say we're making this tree here. <laughs> so making the brush smaller, we make smaller branches. This is very, very rough. I'll do a proper tutorial on this soon. But just the basic concept is that we add all these little branches. So this is if you want to make your tree skeleton um, completely from scratch rather than using the stamps. So the concept with either one of these is once you've got the tree um, bones in there, then you'd make a new layer and then you would add the leaves. So we have two build a leaf brushes 
And these are similar to the tree trunk or branch in that, um, and also similar to the palms, the ferns, in that you, you will come in here and you will just use this flicking motion to create your leaves. So if you want to make leaves completely from scratch and um, you know make a tree that is just kind of whimsical and cute, you can do that with these leaf brushes. And let me just show you the other leaf brush. There's two of them in here. Um, I have a lot of these made, but I'm going to save some of them for another brush set, which will be coming out in a few weeks, which will be a floral brush set. So I'm excited to introduce you to that one when that comes. But we wanted, I wanted to have some leaf brushes in both sets. So those are the leaf brushes. You can make a thin leaf, you can make a fat one, you can, you know, do something in between. It's, um, it's all dynamic. So that is the build a leaf um, idea for building a tree. So we've got over here, we've got the tree trunk or um, the tree trunk brush and the leaf brushes. I'm just going to turn those off now that we've done that and make a new layer above this one to show you a different concept. So after the build a leaf brushes, we've got the leaf cover brushes. And these are similar to ground cover, which is why I've word, used that word cover again, um, except that these are all leaves. So you could put these you know, along the ground if you want to, um, but you can also use them as leaves in the tree. So let me just show you how you would do that. So you have your, your bones of your tree, and then you just kind of go in here and add your leaves in. And I'm making kind of a round circular motion to put these in here. And you, you can add them like that, or you can be a little bit more, you can have more of a broad stroke, for instance, number five here, and just kind of go along the whole thing and make your tree. So those are the leaf cover brushes. You have a lot of different options here. And you can make some interesting and fun little whimsical trees with these. And so beyond this point, we have the last section, which is the dynamic leaves. And we have some scattered leaves. Let me just turn off the tree and show you. We've got our scattered leaves. Um, of various different kinds. And these are just kind of, if you want to have leaves, just um, you could you could put these on trees as well. Um, or if you just want to have some leaf patterns, you can use these. We've also got the leaf line, which the leaves kind of come out randomly. You can use these as a stamp as well, if you just want to have one leaf. And those are our leaf brushes. So if you are familiar with my other brushes in Procreate, you'll know that I really love realistic texture. And the way that this is achieved in Procreate with the brush engine is that the color that you've chosen to paint in your brush, uh, to paint with your brush, will be showing up in the darkest part of the texture. And the rest of the texture will be a combination of that color and transparency. So um, this results in highly textured brushes, sometimes looking a bit see-through. This can be a bit of a problem with brushes like this if you are trying to layer them to make, for instance, a wreath like this one. And I've used a workaround on this wreath and for this brush set that I wanted to share with you. Um, which makes it possible for you to layer your plants on top of each other. And I've used this for other brush sets too, um, if you're familiar with it already. So let me just show you what I mean. I'm going to choose a green color and a fern brush. I'm just going to choose fern number six. So let's say I wanted to add some ferns to this wreath. So I'm making a new layer where I will add the ferns. So let's say I wanted to just have some little ferns coming out as part of this design, like so. 
So you can see that there is actually, let me actually just move this above that so you can really see what I mean. So it is kind of see-through. You can see the other elements underneath of it. Um, so this is not ideal. This is not really how it would look in real life. So in order to achieve this layered look, what we wanna do is use the workaround that I've provided. So it's at the very end of the brush set and it's called the solidifier brush. And I put it at the end of the brush set so that it would be easy for you to find it um, and refer back to that quickly. So what we use with this brush is always going to be white or at least a lighter color. So just go to your, your color wheel and then double tap by the white to get white selected. And then go to the layer where you want to make it solid. Make sure that it's in a, a layer by itself. So for instance, if I drawn these leaves and these leaves in the same layer, this would not work. So you need to make sure that your element is isolated in its own layer. Then tap that layer and tap select. So now these ferns that I drew are selected. So now we can go, while the selection is still active, we can go and make sure we're on the solidifier brush, make sure that we have white selected, and we can, we can play around with the opacity and the size, but I generally just put them both all the way up to get it done quick. So then we can make a pass through here, and you can see already these are getting more solid because of, because of what I just did. You can make another pass to make them even more solid, and you might have to make a couple of passes depending on how see-through the brush, uh, the, the thing you've drawn is. So now you can see that we're much less see-through than we were before. We're showing up on top of this wreath. So I'm turning off the selection by going up here. And now you can see that this combines much more easily and you can add elements that overlap on top of each other in this way using this workaround. And I think actually, I really like those ferns underneath of those leaves here. So I will do a longer tutorial about how to create a wreath um, at a different point, but I wanted to show you that workaround so that you can create layered designs. So if you're doing a wreath, if you're doing like a hillside with lots of plants on it, if you're doing a collage of any kind where there's layering of one plant on top of another, um, you'll want to make sure they're in their own layer. And then you, you can use the solidifier brush with white while that um, element is selected in order to make it um, solid so that you can layer it and make all kinds of fun things in that way. So those are my greenery brushes. Um, I hope that this little walkthrough was helpful and helped you understand the brush set. And if you have any questions, I'm very happy to help you out. So you're very welcome to email me hello at elenajensen.com or contact me on social media and I'll be happy to answer your questions. And um, I will be coming out with some more tutorials with this brush set in the future. And I look forward to providing you with that as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.